Dr. Buttar, Shiva, and Mikevitz are now calling to arrest Dr. Anthony Fauci as the crisis continues to crush President Trump's economy. Now, at the end of this special report, you will be asked to cast your vote on the fate of Dr. Anthony Fauci, like they did in the days of the Roman Colosseum, with a thumbs up or a thumbs down. Now, a thumbs up means arrest Dr. Fauci, a thumbs down means he walks free. So please reserve your vote until the end of this special report and you've heard from every doctor. Yes, the calls to arrest Dr. Fauci have amplified across Americans. Millions are out of work and the economy continues to free fall. Many are pointing the finger at Dr. Fauci and Microsoft founder Bill Gates as the sole cause due to their wildly inaccurate and repeatedly revised pandemic predictions. Now, I had the unique opportunity over the past month to interview several top doctors in their fields who all have come to one conclusion, that Dr. Fauci should be arrested. Dr. Shiva Ayadore, he holds four degrees from MIT, a doctor. He's also the inventor of email at the age of 14 and a PhD in biological engineering who studies the immune system daily. Dr. Rashid Buttar graduated from Washington University with a double major in biology and theology before attending medical school at the University of Osteopathic Medicine and Health Sciences College of Medicine and Surgery. And Dr. Mikovits, she's a cellular and molecular biologist with over 30 years of scientific experience. Dr. Judy Mikovits, she has directed programs on HIV, cancer, epigenetics, and neuroimmune disease with a focus on development of novel drug and diagnostic technologies. All three doctors, they may not agree with each other, but there is one thing they can agree on. They all want to see Dr. Fauci behind bars. Now, in this video, I will present their case to the American public where you will be the judge of the ultimate question should Dr. Fauci be indicted for the crimes alleged by these doctors? That is what you must make the call on. Thumbs up or thumbs down. Now, on, on April 16th, Dr. Buttar joined me to discuss the current state of the pandemic. And we covered a variety of topics. Some of those topics were deemed too controversial. And YouTube decided to remove the original interview as it approached 7 million views. On April 29th, 2020, BuzzFeed contacted me for clarification on a video I produced on the 19th that included excerpts from that interview, which according to a spokesperson from YouTube speaking to BuzzFeed, the BuzzFeed reporter, those excerpts did not violate the social media company's policies. Now, in the opening of the interview, Dr. Buttar discusses how he believes Dr. Fauci got around a 2015 moratorium on CV testing by transferring 3.7 million U.S. taxpayer dollars to the Wuhan lab to continue that very testing. Take a look. Attention homeowners, can we use your home to showcase our next generation metal roofing system? Watch this important message now for full details. Erie Metal Roofs is looking for a limited number of homeowners to try our next generation metal roofing system. Click the link at the bottom of this video to see if you qualify. Our next generation metal roofs look like tile, wood, or shingle, but are guaranteed to last a lifetime. Plus, they're the most energy efficient roofs we've ever offered. Don't miss this unique opportunity to experience the future of roofing. Click the link at the bottom of this video now to see if you qualify. I found a way to run my old computers with no hard drive. Here it is, and it's not in this computer. It's a USB stick, a normal USB drive, and on this drive is an entire operating system. So we find our USB port that we want to use, hit the power button, and start hitting the F12 key. It'll bring up a menu that you need. There it is, that was super fast. We're gonna go ahead and take the down arrow to USB storage device and hit enter. And then watch the magic. Boom. <laughs> that was fast. Oh my yeah, God. goodbye glacier, right? 
Oh my gosh, such a difference. An office always took forever. Let's see. Oh my god. This laptop, the hard drive is I'm going to put it into the side of this laptop right there, and we're just going to hit the power button, and we're going to see what happens. Now, remember, I've seen this before, and I've seen that. Be <laughs> okay, now wait a minute. That screen that was just up there, that, that, it has been locked on that screen for years. It's extra PC. <laughs> I didn't even do anything. All I did was just hit the power button. We were about to throw this to the curb. And my wife's computer broke. We couldn't afford to, you know, buy a new one. And I just had to try out extra PC. Let's go to Google first. Okay. Now, YouTube, look how fast this is. We'll go ahead and play a video right now. Okay. See how quick that loads? That is incredible. I think this thing is about 10 times faster than it was before. I mean, I, I am so impressed with this. These guys are outstanding. I think you're talking about is uh, the moratorium that was placed and then $3.7 million from the Nas National Institute of Health was transferred to China so they could continue this research even though the moratorium so they basically outsourced this this research to China is this the same topic we're talking about here this news this is just breaking Yes, this is exactly right. So it goes back to 2014. The U.S. government decided, based upon certain virologists at that time, saying that, look, there's no justification for this kind of research. There's a potential to, for it to cause harm, cause a pandemic. So there's no justification for us to do this type of research. So the government passed a moratorium in 2014. Fauci approved budget... Uh, 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 approved budgets to be... monies to be... Uh, section for this type of research so basically and i'm getting really every time i think about this it gets me really flustered because i'm so angry that he basically broke the law he, he more than broke the law he created this entire casket that we're seeing with the world shutdown was created by this initial aspect back in 2015. he broke the law he went against government moratoriums he took taxpayer money and he funded research that has now led to the COVID-19. In 2017, he was documented at Georgetown University saying that there will be a pandemic that this presidency will face, that this term will face. How did he know that in 2017 that something was going to happen in 2018, 19, or 2020? There's no, you can't predict the market from three days from today, what's going to happen. How did he know that there was going to be a pandemic? He stated the president of this, this president will face a pandemic. The exact quote, I, I don't want to say the exact words. You guys have the video footage. My point is that there is no question that there will be a challenge to the coming administration in the arena of infectious diseases, both chronic infectious diseases in the sense of already ongoing disease, and we have certainly a large burden of that. But also there will be a surprise outbreak. There will be a surprise outbreak. There will be a surprise outbreak. When somebody starts making these type of statements and then they were involved with the breaking of the law to fund the research that American taxpayers paid for, that then go to Wuhan and now I'm trying to create this diversion and say that it was China. Now shortly after my interview with Dr. Buttara, it went viral. President Trump's personal attorney and the former mayor of New York City, Rudy Giuliani, appeared on a New York morning radio show and called for an investigation of that very grant. Take a look. Today I'm going to show you the five foods you must avoid eating if you have arthritis. If you have arthritis, you need to watch this short video right now. My name is Mark Roach, and I'm the senior arthritis correspondent for healthandwellnesstools.com. And the information I'm about to share with you is based on findings from some of the top doctors and arthritis researchers in the world. Let's start with the first food you should never eat if you have arthritis. That's right, tomatoes. Most people think tomatoes are healthy, and they are if you don't suffer from arthritis. But if you have arthritis, research has shown that eating tomatoes can actually make your pain worse over time. To understand why tomatoes can make your arthritis symptoms worse, you'll need to understand a little bit of the science behind the doctor's findings. See, 
What doctors found was that tomatoes contain small amounts of a toxin called solanine. Scientists classified solanine as a glycoloid poison. Tomatoes produce solanine in their leaves as a natural defense against insects. People who don't have arthritis can absorb small amounts of solanine without issues. But for those of us with arthritis, solanine makes our inflammation in our joints worse. This leads to more pain, and most people never connect that increased pain back to the tomatoes in their diet. So try eliminating tomatoes from your diet for just a few weeks, and I guarantee that you'll feel an immediate difference. Now, tomatoes are just one of the health foods that can aggravate your arthritis symptoms. There are four other foods like this that you need to avoid if you have arthritis, which most people don't know about. That's why I'd like you to watch the full presentation where you can hear directly from the doctors and arthritis specialists about the other foods you should avoid. To learn the rest of the foods you need to avoid if you have arthritis, click watch now below. I know that once you cut these so-called health foods from your diet, it will change your life. You'll notice an immediate difference in your arthritis symptoms and you'll immediately see how just changing your food courses can provide you with significant pain relief. In the full presentation, you'll also learn which foods can reduce inflammation and arthritis pain. The doctors and specialists will walk you through the groundbreaking research on how these foods can naturally relieve arthritis. I guarantee you're going to be surprised by what they found. Not only this, but you'll learn how digestive enzymes and antioxidants have been found in studies to relieve your arthritis pain. You'll learn so much from this presentation, and I urge you to watch it right now. The presentation normally costs $49.95, but through this link, you can watch it for free. Once the video ends, your opportunity to watch this presentation will be gone forever. So click watch now and find out what the rest of the foods are that you should avoid eating if you have arthritis. I'll see you there. I don't care who it is, I'll work with anybody if I feel I'm going to help the American people and the American worker. He said everything uh, that I could have hoped for. He has been uh, responsive. Uh, he's done a lot of good things. There's some very strange things that have to be looked at very carefully. You're absolutely right. China predicted this could happen. China also, for the last 10, 12 years, has been carrying on these experiments, including in this Wuhan laboratory, with animals, and actually making the virus more dangerous, seeing how dangerous the virus can become. Now, you could say that's for scientific purposes, or you could say it's for the purpose of weaponizing it. Back in 2014, the Obama administration prohibited the U.S. from giving any money to any laboratory including in the U.S., that was fooling around with these viruses. Prohibited. Despite that, Dr. Fauci gave $3.7 million to the Wuhan laboratory. And then even after the State Department issued reports about how unsafe that laboratory was and how suspicious they were of the way in which they were developing a virus that could be transmitted to humans, we never pulled that money. So something here is going on, John. I don't want to make any accusations, but there was more knowledge about what was going on in China uh, with our scientific people than they disclosed to us when this first came out. I mean, just think of it. If this laboratory turns out to be the place where the virus came from, we pay for it. We pay for the damn virus that's killing us. Now, probably the most significant moment once news broke of the $3.7 million grant to the Wuhan lab was when Newsmax reporter Emerald Robinson directly asked the president about that grant. Watch. Thank you, Mr. President. 
that U.S. intelligence is saying this week that the coronavirus likely came from a level four lab in Wuhan. There's also another report that the NIH under the Obama administration in 2015 gave that lab $3.7 million in a grant. Why would the U.S. give a grant like that to China? Uh, the Obama administration gave them a grant of $3.7 million. I've been hearing about that. Uh, and we've instructed that if any grants are going to that uh, area, we're looking at it literally about an hour ago and also early in the morning. Uh, we will end that grant very quickly. But it was granted quite a while ago. They were granted a substantial amount of money. Uh, we're going to look at it and take a look, but I understand it was a number of years ago, right? So you are when, when did you hear? When did you hear was the grant was made? 2015. 2015. Who was president then? I yeah, who was president then? Now, all things considered, these are important questions that should be asked and not be silenced. Now, later in my interview, I directly asked Dr. Buttar if Dr. Fauci is responsible for the pandemic because of that research grant. Here's his response. Is, is Fauci directly responsible for this pandemic because he maneuvered the money, he, he maneuvered around the moratorium, kept this chimeric research going in China. Is he, is he directly responsible for not just the pandemic, but also the response that's killed the economy and put, what, 17 to 22 million people out of work? Is, is Fauci directly responsible? I'm going to say this. I think that there, I've seen some petitions going around. I know Dr. Shiva said that Fauci should be should be fired. I think that's the nicest thing that could be done to Fauci. I think he should. He's a, he has show, he's a criminal. He's broken the law. He's gone against the government. I mean, that, that, to me, that seems like it's a traitorous thing to do when you when you the government has passed a regulation and he's at one of the highest levels in the NIH. He's, he's got a directorship at the NIH, and then he breaks the law. He breaks the moratorium, and then funds research against something that could potentially cause harm throughout the entire world and he's in collusion with with the foreign government collusion with the foreign government there you have dr pudar's take now before we before we look back at the historical record of the alleged misdeeds that led to dr fauci's rise to the top of the united states medical industrial complex let's take a look now at a clip from my april 9th interview with dr shiva where he called for the indictment of Dr. Fauci. Take a look. Let's talk about Fauci. You know, since we spoke, we ran a campaign to fire Fauci. And I frankly believe this individual should be indicted uh, and should be fired and, and all sorts of charges should be leveled at him because he's essentially been the mastermind of an organization um, for many, many years across many, many presidents, which has promoted a fake science that the immune system is so weak and that you always characterize some virus as a cause of destruction to the immune system. He did this with HIV and AIDS. And so this is his, you know, probably second or, or third rodeo. And the goal here is to scare everyone to, with, with a fake science understanding that as though the immune system gets attacked by the virus, right? So one of the things we did was we, called for his firing and his indictment and i think close to forty thousand people in a few days signed that petition i would say we probably have close to two thousand doctors now gary across the world because the doctors themselves are recognizing that they are victims of a big pharma medical education system now, if you look at a guy like fauci i believe he's on the leadership council of the gates foundation he loves the clintons and his relationship through the NIH and the CDC and the WHO is this triangle, which, by the way, the Chinese Communist Party and the Chinese CDC is part of the NIH of the United States funded even as early as two or three years ago, 14 million dollars to the Chinese CDC. So the entire cabal here is not about health. It's not about um, understanding how we boost people's immune systems. So in this entire discourse, that is not what Fauci's been talking about. That's not what the FDA's been talking about. That's not what the WHO's been talking about. That's not what the CDC's been talking about. In fact, you have the Gates, you have Zuckerberg, and you have the Clinton Global Initiative who are all about vaccines, vaccines, vaccines. So their entire opportunity is, you know, we talked about early and, you know, the trajectory of which, you know, I characterized early on is the entire purpose of this is to scare, you know, the Jesus out of everyone. So then, 
when next year comes, or even September, October of this year, when the flu season comes, people basically blindly say, yeah, ship me up. Yes, I'll accept the vaccine card. Yes, I'll have to get um, vaccinated before I get my driver's license. I'm willing to you know, show my little vaccine card before I go to the gym. Total control. Dr. Shiva clearly knows the end game here. Total control. And the one way you can have total control is by creating total fear, total panic. But as Amelia Earhart says, fear is like a paper tiger. And like the Wizard of Oz, once you peek behind the curtain, you reveal a weak little man. So let us peek behind the curtain, shall we? Dr. Judy Mikovits, she worked directly with Dr. Fauci during the HIV pandemic, and she draws terrifying parallels between then and now. I interviewed her on April 28th, where she declared that Dr. Fauci's rise to the top of the medical industrial complex left millions of dead bodies in his wake. And it would make Joseph Mengele blush. Take a look. Work. I joined the Biological Response Modifiers Program under the, the leadership of Dr. Frank Rossetti's lab. We, uh, we confirmed the isolation of HIV from saliva and blood that Dr. Luc Montagnier, Nobel laureate Luc Montagnier, had done um, earlier that year. Our paper was in press um, at, at the time, was confidential in press. Uh, Dr. Fauci called the laboratory. I'm 25-year-old lab technician. He called the laboratory. I answered the phone, explained that Dr. Rossetti was out of town and um, would address his concerns when he got back. Dr. Fauci demanded a copy of the paper, um, which was confidential. That's unethical. I refused to give it to him. He threatened to fire me for insubordination. Um, I didn't budge. He bullied Dr. Rossetti when he came back to town um, to give him the paper, which um, his crony, Dr. Gallo, then copied. Um, and and this, he delayed the publications of of the confirmation um, resulting in the delay of the diagnostics tests and the delay of the immune therapies that could have been used right then to stop um, the spread of HIV AIDS. That continued, that resulted in millions of deaths. So you heard her. She believes Dr. Fauci is responsible for millions of deaths. Now at the end of the interview, I asked her directly, should Dr. Fauci be indicted? Watch. Should Dr. Fauci be indicted? Absolutely. Absolutely, she said. Now, you've heard from each of these doctors. Now, what say you? Should he be indicted? Cast your vote by tapping either thumbs up if you want to see Dr. Fauci indicted, thumbs down if you want to see him walk free. There are two icons directly under the video player window. Then... Leave your reason why in the comments below. Then simply pass this video along to someone who you think should also cast their vote. Remember, we the people possess the power, so use it. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you at the next report.